Okay, the traveling man. Coach, coach, Coach Kyle, <laughs> give me the rundown of the list of places you've been and coached. Where'd you go first off? Uh, so I'm from Iowa. I went to Simpson. So, okay. So uh, spent a little time in Nebraska, like Concordia, Nebraska, and then Iowa State, then Wayland Baptist, back to Iowa State, and then Campbell, and now Northern Colorado. And that's been in the last 11 years. What? Okay. Do you get a? Do you even get a U-Haul anymore? Uh, I've gotten pretty good at packing, moving. Yeah. Leaving stuff. Yeah, leave stuff, sell stuff, take what you need. Yeah. But I mean, at the end of the day, early in my career, some of those first moves were one year, one year stints, and things just kind of getting my feet wet and coaching, and and then really it's just been how things have, ha have played out, how there's been good moves for me. There's been great opportunities to work for Kevin Jackson or Kerry Colad or Troy Nickerson or whoever. So, you know, you don't pass on those opportunities as you build your career and, and learn and, you know, uh, never been afraid of the challenge to go somewhere new. Okay, the misconception I think that we have in college wrestling is, and I said this to Seeley, I'm like, we measure so many people on all American. Oh, yeah. And I, I have a problem with that. Yeah. But, you know, to a degree, I even do it sometimes, mm -hmm. right? I'm more talking to a, I was a 500, slightly above 500 yeah. D1 college wrestler, yeah. right? Kent State, average guy. Yeah. So when you look at it, we're, we're so into that. We're yeah. so into hire this guy because he's an NCAA champion or mm -hmm. a three-time All-American, yeah. right? And I look at Coach Barber. Yeah. Coach Barber, I want to say, was a, he was a D3 guy, wasn't he? Mm -hmm. yeah. So, so like, that's got to give you confidence when you see something like that, right? Yeah, and, you know, that's something I dealt with early in my career, especially trying to get jobs and just work my way up. And, and that's been the, uh, the thing for me is just put my nose down, be quiet, do a good job, and it's paid off everywhere that I've gone. Um, and so obviously having the right connections, the right people, meeting the right people in wrestling, um, that all plays into getting jobs, but it is hard to break into Division One coaching uh, without some of those accolades, and and I think that's something that our sport does a disservice to ourselves, honestly. We yeah, because we miss out on a lot of really good. We coaches. do. Yeah. yeah, we we push a lot of people off. Yeah, because they weren't this or that, or didn't yeah. win this conference, or didn't wrestle in this conference, or didn't win this mm -hmm. or that. That's that's a problem because you're yeah. turning off people. But then those people who we've turned off. They go and run companies. You know what I mean? They yeah. they go yeah, and they're, they're, they're educators, right? right? They're successful at whatever they do. Right. Because they take their wrestling mentality into yeah. that, right? Yeah. Okay. So being here a part of this, cause starting yeah. kind of like how this is building from 2006, I want to say, Sealy said is when they became yeah, Division rough, One. Yeah, roughly. Something like that. Okay. So, they were so, Division One back in the 60s, went to Division Two until the early 2000s, back to Division One. Okay. So, yeah. so when you look at the, back on the rise now, right? Yeah. Back in Division One, you're in the Big 12. Yeah, this has got to be an exciting era for you guys. It is, and you know, I think you're seeing the fruits of some of that. Coach Nickerson's been here for four years, so obviously he came. He started laying the groundwork, getting the right kids in. Some of the, not necessarily wrong, but getting some of the old culture out, the new culture in, and really just making it what he wanted it to be. Um, you're seeing that payoff now with the recruiting class that we had this year uh, and even last year. We got obviously some good recruits last year, uh, but this year we obviously signed a top five or ten recruiting class depending on whose uh, list you're looking at. But being in the Big 12 helps. Our location helps. Being in Colorado helps. You know, I think Coach Nickerson's a draw. All, all sorts of things, you know, that go into what makes a kid want to come here. Yeah, I you know the forty five minutes away from Rocky Mountain National Park where I'll be hiking in yeah, two days. Hurt. That that I like that right. Yeah. I salivated. <laughs> I was like, oh, when he told when yeah. he said that, I didn't realize you were that close to the east gate of it. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, yeah, not too far from a lot of stuff. Uh, and then forty five minutes from the airport. Yeah, if if that I'm, yeah. I mean, it's certainly I broke a lot of laws coming coming here, but like I, I yeah, you know what I mean. Like yeah. I made it right. Right, I made great time, obviously, but yeah. but you can do it in forty five minutes. Yeah. I don't know if you can do it with a van, a bus full of people, yeah. forty five minutes, but you know what I mean. It's under an hour, right? For so sure. that that's a that's a huge draw too. And yeah. as far as the kids being from so far away, it's yeah. crazy. The three guys I just interviewed, the closest guy was six hours away. Yeah, and you're gonna get that. So we have a we do have an interesting mix. We've got kids from all over. Generally speaking, more than half our roster is from Colorado. Um, same with our incoming recruiting class out of the you know, eight or nine kids coming in, more than half are from Colorado. So that's always gonna be our base. Colorado high school wrestling is 
gotten a lot better in recent years. Yeah, they got a world team member, if you didn't see. That, yeah, world <laughs> team member, obviously. We from, had, from, from like 25, 30 yeah, minutes away, right? Yeah, and we had uh, three of the top 100 recruits that we signed in this class were all from Colorado this That's year. That's pretty good. Uh, Alir Schwartz and Darius Robeson. So, you know, Colorado's got some good kids, and we want to keep them home. I like it. I like yeah. what I'm hearing. Yeah. I'm getting pumped. Yeah. I can't wait to get outside and enjoy this heat. Um, did you get any soap, by the way? I got some soap. You got some soap. Yeah. All right, I, I want to make sure you get hooked up. We you guys just up. ordered some for camp, didn't you? We ordered some from camp. Yeah, I need it. We just we moved 12 mats today, getting ready to set up for uh, our camp that starts on Monday. we got a few hundred kids that will be here on uh, Monday morning. They're going to so, need a defender they built. Man. Yeah, I'm not exactly, going to lie. The defense yeah. soap's going to help those yeah. guys out. All right, Coach, you got anything else for me? No, I just appreciate you being here and, and uh, kind of giving a little spotlight to our program, and that's something we really appreciate. And, you know, keep an eye on us for some of these kids that are coming in and a lot of talented kids for us redshirted last year, and some of these freshmen coming in are ready to push these guys that are already in the lineup. So Billy? Billy's tough. I like Billy. You know, I like what Billy's got going on. Billy, there's it's explosive, a couple man. other kids that redshirted last year, Jace Kelzer, some other kids that are really tough that are looking pretty good in the room right now. And some of these true freshmen, obviously, we're, we're bringing in a good class, and they're chomping at the bit to get in the lineup. So it's going to be hard to keep them out, and we're just excited for the future.